Good morning all, it's James here, and I'm going to make a video of my refitted F-25C. As you can see, there is absolutely no wind on Lake George this morning, so it's a prime opportunity to do this. Um, I'm doing it for three reasons. I've had a lot of questions from F-25C, F-82R sailors about the F-85SR floats, and you see them here, and I'll go over them. Um, as well as a lot of other details on the boat, the stern arch, the dodger, etc. I've also posed a lot of questions to the F boat list and I've just monitored conversations. So I've really benefited from all that sage collective wisdom and a lot of that input went into the design decisions for this boat. And lastly, I just need to document everything I've done. I won't go over everything, it's just it's too tedious, um, but I'll hit the, the major points. So, the F-25C, I'll slowly walk, see if we can pan to. Um, F stands for Farrier, short for Ian Farrier, the designer. And I can't express enough gratitude and appreciation for him. Um, he assisted with this boat, assisted with my first F-25C. Yes, I've had two of them. And he even helped considerably with my F F-24 Mark I. Um, the F-25Cs... I think they made about 47, although many have been destroyed by now or some. Let's see, they're built by Colorado Composites, or I've also seen it as MPG Marine. I think that's short for uh, Mike and Pam Guthrie. So let's see, they are a, an epoxy carbon fiber balsa boat, originally 1,700 pounds all up, including motor sails and everything. Let's see, why, why balsa? Um, these boats incredibly were baked in an autoclave. Um, and many things here, speaking with Ian, just, just not found on other boats. The, the beams, for example, solid carbon fiber, not composite, not glued together. Never a problem per Ian, and he doesn't, never expected one either. So, I think that covers the boat basics. And I will, at this point, put my shorts on, my swim shorts, so that I can get in the water and show you the F-85SR floats um, closer up. Okay, here we go. So I should st state at the outset, I'm a solo sailor, so the design decisions I made reflect that. It's really to accommodate me. Um, let's see. This boat, as I mentioned, I purchased from Ed Wateki, and thanks to him. Um, so he sold me the boat, he had the, F, the plans for the floats, and another note on Ian. Ian upgraded the float plans from the F-82R to the F-85SR for free, and then provided guidance throughout the, the build. Um, so th thanks to Ed, he taught me, this boat taught me a lot, he taught me a lot. Um, also my first F-25C was built by Nelson Wright, so I've kind of seen the two evolutionary paths. Nelson built his kind of in close proximity, I believe, to Randy Smythe in Florida. So it looked very similar to Randy's boat. So I was able to kind of take the best of both worlds, what I found on both boats. So I'm walking out. So the F-85 SR floats. Um, the F-25 C sailors will see a lot more buoyancy for, and you see, of course, the reverse bows. But even aft, um, if you've seen the F-85, C, F-85, F-25C floats. They're very pointed at the end. There's almost no buoyancy. Um, these floats are longer than the F-25C floats and considerably. So I'll kind of walk out here into the, the cold Lake George waters here. See if I can line my eyes up with the bow pulpit. Um, right about there. I don't know if I can raise it high enough. I can't really see. My screen went dark, so I'm not sure what you're seeing there. Um, so you can see that the bows are well out in front of the boat. Um, and I, I guessed around six to eight inches, maybe more. The entry to the bows is very fine. Of course, that's the crash box. Um, and I don't know if I can get, there's a swim no, rope in my way here. If I can step over it real quick. Because um, the F-25C sailors will really see the difference in the buoyancy down low. Um, so I'm not sure you're getting a good perspective, but that's it. So the floats themselves are fiberglass, carbon, Kevlar. 
um, and Corsell. So Ed had purchased all the materials for the floats and of course sold these to me with the boat. The floats themselves are lowered two inches, um, very similar to my first F25C built by Nelson Wright. Um, so this was done on Randy Smythe's um, suggestion and it was done with Ian's approval. One of the things that Randy I've heard, uh, I haven't didn't hear directly, but he believes that lowering the floats creates earlier planing of the main hull. So again, the floats are down two inches, just like my first boat. Um, an often overlooked factor of lowering your floats is they will now touch the water. So when you're sitting at rest, you know, at anchor or something like that, you're not continually rocking side to side. So you're much more attached to the water, which I like as well. Now, one of the things I like, wish I, you know, well, as I stutter along here, you'll see the net rails. I actually prefer to have the nets attached to the floats, but with the lowered floats, I found on, on Nelson's boat, the first 25C, um, that would create a slight angle. So when, if just sitting out there, you'd continually be, you know, be scooching up because you'd kind of slip down. And of course, it made sleeping on the nets also just not, not optimal. So the net poles. The net poles are carbon fiber windsurf masts. Um, they come in at six pounds or under six pounds, and that's not the full mast, the full pole itself. Um, and they are carbon on. And you'll see the little stanchions. Those are actually portions of the top part of the pole. And so just use everything. Um, one of the things I failed to mention, kind of glossed over there, is Ed had sold me the fiberglass, the frames, and the plans for the floats. But then I added also carbon, carbon fiber, and Kevlar. Um, all along the top deck there is carbon, along the keel is carboned. All of the stringers are carboned in, the, the beams are carboned in, the chain plate, and that is, that is an F31 chain plate, by the way, so overkill, but if you ever you know, want to do the race to Alaska, it'd probably be beneficial to have that. Um, so they're, they are just rigid, they, they ring. If you strike them, they just resonate. Um, Kevlar, I mentioned Kevlar. In this main compartment here, it is lined with Kevlar, why? Because that's my anchor locker. I actually sought out a boat that did not have an anchor locker up on the forecastle there. Um, interior space is a premium with these boats. But also, this comes from my you know, Navy SAR background, an anchor is emergency equipment. And I'm, again, I solo sail, so in the conditions that I'm having an emergency, <laughs> that I need to get an anchor, getting up to the forecastle, of course, it's probably not that safe, whereas I can actually get out to the hatch here with tiller in hand. I mean, who knows if my autopilot is working at that point, uh, if it's an emergency situation. So that is the floats. Um, there are carbon tubes, uh, you know, carboned in throughout the length of them. Those are Armstrong hatches. Those are the, that's the original Bomar hatch for the main compartment. And I will replace that. Lumar makes a lightweight, low profile. Um, been eyeing that, but that's, that's down the road here. Okay, I guess I should go bow to stern, top to bottom. Um, so forward, you'll see a Smythe spinnaker, and that is on the Caligo top-down spinnaker furler. Really nice unit. Um, a lot lighter also than my, I had a Facnor on my previous F25C. And it's great having this, with this furler, of course, I can rig either this or, and I actually have a separate, you know, furler for my screecher, but I'm a code zero guy, so that's on the way. So just the ability to change um, sails and use the same furler is very nice. Let me see the drive lines there. They go through two, two uh, Nautos stanchion mounted um, blocks there. Um, and then up to the Caligo line guides and then back to a cam cleat just to keep it shut should I need to. Um, at night, of course, or sailing upwind, it really does come down. Um, and I typically, typically tie it together as is my jib right now. And on that note, the jib. So the jib is a Calvert roller furling, and that is on the Caligo Extra Lightweight Headsail Furling 
system. Um, this is this is incredible. Um, I was actually sailing this past week, the past two weeks, with my Smythe. It's a fully battened, and I can change head sails, you know, from a fully battened non-furling sail to a furling head sail. Oh my God, five minutes maybe, um, and that's me solo. So goes up and right down. I'm not struggling with a luff track anymore. Um, and with the Caligo, another nice factor is actually shorten the force stay a little um, just balancing out the helm a little and I was able to do this myself whereas if it had been wire swages you know I really don't have those tools I could have purchased the tools of course but um, this is real nice under 15 minutes um, second time it would probably take me 7 to 10 to change um, the length and I can do that with the spinnaker torque line as well um, the jib, you do see I run two to, two to one lines, so a la, you know, the, the Hobie 18, Hobie 17, the Super Hobie uh, 17. And I thought about going to, you know, a, a, a tacker, self-tacker, but you see my, my dagger board <laughs> sticking prominently up there. Um, and also I knew I would have tripped on it, and my, and my daughter likes to sit there and lean back against the mast when I do entice her to come out with me. Um, so I run two to one. I have the lines labeled. Um, so I have two stripes on them for when I have two wraps around the winch or three um, and where, where it would go through the cleat. So I can pretty much tack and adjust the jib pr without touching a winch. I will, you know, fine tune it here and there. Depends how good I'm doing that day. Okay, mainsail. Mainsail is a Smythe and you're seeing they're all carbon here. Um, and I'm showing this for a couple reasons. Um, one, there's often discussion about how to get good shape on these big uh, square tops. You'll see what Randy does. You can see the conspicuous batten there. It actually crosses two battens, um, whereas other designers I've seen just kind of have another angled one off that top batten. So that, that's real nice. Um, the other often uh, spoken about, there are often discussion. It's about what to do with these square tops um, when they come down, whether they be lazy jacks rolled around. I don't know if you can see, I actually have halyard shackles. Um, so the halyard shackers, shackles stay attached to these slugs and just shackle right into the sail real quick. Um, so it lets me fold it much better. Um, on that note, I did bring one of the, the slugs out here because again, quite often every six months or so we have another discussion on you know tides tracks things like this um, of course I'm never putting a track on a uh, f25c mast I'm not gonna put that weight aloft or add that weight whatsoever um, so I found these Ron stands see if I can get it out here um, and on the very end you see they have a ball um, and it's not really about I can pull this thing up all the way by hand it's more safety of getting it down and I'll pan again people know what I'm talking about. So we're on Lake George, you see that mountain there, and you'll be sailing along, and you'll blue skies, and then you'll look up and it'll be black clouds. Um, and from the time you see the black cloud, that downdraft will hit that hill and come rushing down and across the lake at, you know, 57 miles an hour. So the ability to get the mainsail down and roll up all my other sails um, quickly is absolutely paramount. So that's what these slugs allow me to do. Any point of sail, if they push into the mast, they have those rollers, um, so they just it just comes down, which is fantastic. Um, you're seeing a very basic lazy jack system I have. Um, we're talking lazy, lazy jack. Um, and I just use the Screecher Halyard. I run a three sail boat. Again, I'm solo, so um, that's, that's what I do. Okay, so those are sails. Uh, let's see. Bow to stern again, um, electronics and lights. Quite often, everyone discusses where to place your lights. You can see my lights there on the bow right down below, actually the furler, furling unit. Other people talk about putting at the end of it bow sprit or up on the rail so they can be seen or not occluded by sails. Um, you know, but you get into seas, you know, six foot seas, and your lights are gonna be occluded quite, quite often. So, here, so here's my, um, I guess, advice and people can flame me for what it is. Uh, again, this is coming from ex-Navy. Use your common sense. If I am in six, seven foot waves um, and I'm afraid that or fear that my lights are not going to be seen, I am gonna fire up my masthead. Um, so the boat is all LED. Um, 
It's aqua signal on the bow and stern. And then up top, you see the aqua signal tricolor anchor light. Um, I do have a four spar deck and steaming light. You see that right in front of my spreaders there. Um, that's the electronics. Boat is full tactic and Ed never installed this. Um, the owner prior to Ed had purchased all of these toys. So you see the masthead wind. Um, and then underneath I do have the transducer for depth and speed and temperature. Although I also have GPS speed. Um, so I do have a race master. I just picked it up and went off on eBay real inexpensively. Um, you'll see my tactic settings there. I have one outboard on the combing on each side and then one also in the cockpit. Um, and really all I do is I rig them for speed. Um, I sail to speed. That's, that's, yeah, that's my method, so to speak. Um, so that's it, F85 SR floats, sail inventory, all new wiring throughout the boat, um, tactic and aqua signal and four spar. So I'll move to the back of the boat and conspicuously you see the stern arch. Um, Okay, stern arch. <laughs> I realize calling this thing an arch is taking serious artistic license. Um, what it is is carbon fiber windsurf masts. And you see the vertical piece are the base and the angled piece are the tops. And I cut quite a bit off. Um, poles come in at six pounds or under. Um, the top platform is core cell and carbon fiber, it's composite. And you see the little stringers underneath, those are carbon fiber windsurf masks cut in half. So, and then everything is carboned and epoxyed on. At the base, there is Kevlar, um, just for structural support. The, the reason, my, my primary reason for the stern arch was a aft mast support, so I wouldn't have to carry that heavy stainless steel um, thing I have. And, and that just interferes with the rudder, interferes with getting on and off the boat. Just a, just a pain in the butt. Um, and I wanted to be able to drop the mast. I wanted to be able to do the Erie Canal and other you know, voyages here in, in the northeast part of the United States. So the ability to do this um, was pretty important. It's also not a bad idea to have a cage on the back of an F-25C. Uh, for me as a solo sailor, but also my 11-year-old daughter. Um, many other purposes. Um, I might put a solar panel up there. Right now I'm actually configuring the solar panel. Just a real quick one on top of the Dodger. So I've actually just begun that. Um, I can put a radar dome up there. I'm probably going to move VHF to my aft um, support there. Presently it's on top of my mast. Um, but my last F-25C, Nelson Wright put it right on the, on the transom there, worked fine. Mike Lenneman states, you know, it does just as well there. And I know theoretically, yes, get it 36, 37 feet in the air, or actually 40. Um, but it's just easier to maintain. So I'm gonna put a whip on the back there. Um, it also serves as a great attachment point for keeping that daggerboard rudder from dragging, so to, just to lash it up real quick, it's just on a Dyneema line and a clip. Um, my swim ladder is, you know, a la US Navy, a rope ladder because it now hangs vertical off the stern of the boat, so it actually works. Um, so I just use that. It takes me back to my Navy days. So we'll kind of swing around, take a look. Um, one of the things I had to do for the stern arch. Um, I had to build out essentially, you know, they put hammerheads on the front of these boats for, you know, anchors. Um, my traveler already extended out beyond the lip there. So I just added a carbon plate um, and carboned it in. Although you do see some bolts there too. Attachment points are kind of a good thing as well. Um, so I have a video of the motor swinging underneath. I can't do it here. I can't deploy the motor, um, but maybe I'll, I'll splice that in as well. So a lot of other uses for stern arch. Um, the, the F-25C main is boomless, so I can always real quickly string it aft for my, you know, tent. Uh, most people call them a boom tent. This would be a boomless tent. So 
so that's that. Okay, you see the hammerhead, <laughs> hammer tail um, extension. So the arm passes right through first. So there we go. First thing you see, of course, is the tiller. Um, the tiller is, you guessed it, uh, carbon fiber windsurf mast <laughs> somewhere in the delivery boat in the final completion of the boat uh, this year lost the tiller so I had, to, I had to make one so carbon fiber tiller and there's a lot of discussion on the list you know to use wood to insulate yourself from you know electrical strikes well I'm sitting on a carbon fiber boat um, and actually the only attachment of the tiller to the back of the boat there is the Dyneema so I don't really know the dialectic properties of Dyneema versus carbon um, so I just did that. Um, I moved my gas can from out. It was in the locker there under the cockpit. Um, Nelson Wright had his there. I just I like it gets it out of the way. It's unused space. Um, makes refueling very easy. Um, let's see. So we're moving on board here. Oh, um, I'll tell you real quick. In the hatch here are my dock lines. And I, they're 35 feet and they have snubbers. Um, on the other side, in the other hatch over there, um, the round one, is my mast raising, but also towing, things like that, um, and a snubber, should I need to. Okay, autopilot, often spoken about on the list. Um, this is a Raymarine ST4000. Um, they're not made, they've been updated. Um, they're not made anymore. It's kind of overkill for this boat, um, but as Ed stated, it has the power and the responsiveness to steer the boat downwind in waves under spinnaker. And I did try that proof of concept uh, real quick. I'm not a fan of letting the autopilot, you know, take control of the boat under spinnaker. I just did it just, just to test it out. And it does. Um, it, there are probably about three or four foot waves following me. Uh, so the boat's kind of washing around a little. Um, so real nice. Okay, next. Oh. Windward sheeting. Um, this is discussed in the recent, recent past. So I get a chance to, to show, just so, it's kind of hard to, to visualize. So, you see, I'll go this way. If I put pressure on this direction, as if the sail would, these jaws will close. Whereas now, I don't know if you can see that, but you can see the slight movement this way, those jaws close. So maybe they're more open this time. Ready? Okay, so you see how it closes. Um, so real quick, tacking. I do it in about 10 to 15 seconds. I literally put the helm over, uh, release the jib, unwrap it, immediately sheet it in from the other side to my either two marks or three marks, depending on how many wraps I have, and cleat it. Turn around, uh, steer to course, and raise the traveler above the center line. It's, it's that quick, um, and with the deep daggers, <laughs> This boat just pivots. Um, one of my questions to the list recently was how to get a super long tiller. Um, what I want to do, of course, is optimally be sailing from the front cross beam upwind. Um, and again, I can get to the, the, the float over there, the locker for my anchor in an emergency situation. And there were a lot of recommendations about, you know, the, the normal cat style, uh, but those are eight feet, maybe even 10 at best, um, whereas I wanted 12. And someone recommended the uh, bow hook. Um, now, so what I did was blend that with what Nelson Wright taught me from his boat. I love the four spar connectors. They're just, and there's, there's just no slop to them whatsoever. So on the front of my bow hook, I drilled, ordered one of these from, from four spar, and then carboned it in. Never painted it. Probably should have. Um, so, in any event, I can drive from the forward beam. Um, so let's see. Next, I guess we're moving into the boat here. And I'm, I'm ignoring all the tiny little repairs I did um, up at the bow. I did some, some work up there, just here and there around the windows. Um, wasn't much to do, actually. So the Dodger. The Dodger's my design. Um, design goals were extremely low profile, um, I needed standing headroom, and essentially permanent because when I put the boat in the water, the hatch comes off and remains ashore. Now the hatch is my, I made it, um, 
Most of the 25 C's just have a canvas cover. I wanted a hatch. I made a hatch out of carbon fiber um, and core cell, and it's super light. But getting rid of it, it this, you know, of course, canvas is even lighter. Um, so it's freestanding. You can see the poles. Um, and really, I've just had poles on the side um, in my previous incarnations on my previous boat. And the pole pushes the forward arch forward and the back arch aft. And it just, it just stands there. Now on this, I actually have lashed it too. And I did just add this middle pole. Um, see if I can climb in the boat here. Um, the middle pole I haven't done anything with. I just added two days ago. I needed a hard point because I'm mounting a uh, solar panel on top of this. So you can see this is, whereas this is solid. Um, this even slides forward and aft. Um, so the poles themselves, how I did it is I fill them with sand. These are PVC poles, excuse me. Uh, fill them with sand and bend them with a heat gun around a frame. So you get a, you know, a piece of plywood, put nails in. Um, and when you make them, make a few, because you never know if you'll need spares. And then I take a carbon fiber sleeve and epoxy that uh, in over them. And they are, they are just rock, rock solid. I mean, it's essentially a solid dodger. Um, along the sides are awning tracks. So it is permanent. It's not like a snap, snapped on Dodger. Um, so for the poles themselves, by the way, I don't know if you can see, all I do is I put the end caps on and put a little tiny bolt in there and drill into the frame. So it just stick, stays there. So super simple. Um, I can unzip it, pull the poles and it folds down in under 30 seconds um, and goes right under the hatch. And I do have, you see the zipper here, I do have a back panel uh, and it's completely, completely watertight. So um, I probably shouldn't say watertight, upside down would not be uh, watertight. Okay. Okay, the interior. My design goal here was just minimal but functional. Um, Ed did not finish the interior of the boat. Um, he took a bunch of uh, J-boat sailors sailing out on Lake Ontario. <laughs> they told him, you know, don't you dare touch this boat. It's, it's just a lightweight, you know, razor. Um, so the interior was completely unfinished, just black carbon, sharp edges, things like that. Um, I couldn't really have that um, with an 11-year-old daughter and then a wife who every once in a while I can actually get on board this boat. Um, so I sanded everything down, no sharp edges, and then painted with interlux um, bright side i just like the bright side um, i know people take less expensive options you know kind of home paints and do the interior of the boats but the bright side just is resistant to everything it's hard and just lasts okay so functional yet minimal um, the benches are made out of this honeycomb material super light um, and when i first purchased the boat I'd step on them um, and they would flex a little and I didn't like that so of course I added the new posts down there which are of course are the top of carbon fiber windsurf masts kind of kind of see, see a trend here to build a house with carbon fiber windsurf masts well okay how about maybe a yurt um, the seat backs back in my f24 days I watched people passengers when I was sailing up wind in really strong winds, and of course the boat's heeled over, and this boat doesn't heel that much, um, but they'd actually change sides. So I wanted something where you're actually sitting, laying back a little more, more like a Ches lounge chair. These are completely comfortable, um, and maybe I can mount this GoPro and, and show you. Um, I'm here by myself. So there is storage behind the backs. Um, so I keep curtains, things like that. Um, in fact, you see the curtains up. I camped here last night um, and I do have curtains for the Dodger too. Oh, I failed to mention on the Dodger, um, one change from following kind of the, I use the sail right, you know, guide and then you really have to adapt it because it really is a different design. But instead of using binding on the inside of the windows, I use fuzzy Velcro because there's your attachment point for your curtains for the Dodger, too. Um, and I mentioned I have a back flap. The back flap does have a screening um, with a roll-up flat. 
So since we're looking here, you can actually see my navigation table, table, chart table there. Um, see my little cutout there for my Arrigo alcohol stove, and in there is my cups, my plates, everything else. So the boat, boat is loaded for bear for camping. Um, that is a slide-in two and a half gallon water um, jug. There's a little rail in there, and then of course there's I've added a little carbon fiber tag, so I can, you know. Uh, Dyneema it in there and that works great. No sink. I don't really need, see the need for a sink, uh, especially the sailing I do um, Okay, getting back to the benches Underneath maybe you can see there are bags hanging underneath um, You can just reach in and drop something in and should you need to see what's in there um, you just pull up the the pad here um, and take a look, open the, open the hatch. Um, note on the pads, of course, I, I did all this work myself. Um, again, I wanted to go minimal, and I actually just used, Walmart has these lightweight camping pads. Um, it's a closed cell, and I didn't, haven't found anything similar, um, and it, it just proved to be the best option. Um, one of the things I failed to mention, too, about the seat backs, the seat backs being set back like that, are better for sleeping. Um, if you have shoulders, um, you can actually use these as good pipe berths. Um, so you're seeing my electronics there too. I built that cubby um, for you know iPad, phones, things of that nature, natural car charging station. Um, the boat does have red interior lights as well as white. So when you see my bags hanging, made those as well as as well as my sheet bags out in the cockpit. I am coming down in now. I'm standing up. Um, you don't want to see my face. Um, for the attachment points for my bags, and I have them kind of all over. I mostly have them on clips, so I can just unclip them and get the weight off the boat. Um, I just carbon fibered in little pieces of PVC, um, so I have places to string them up. You can actually see them up there in the in the V berth as well. Uh, I mentioned about using these for sleeping. They're very wide, very deep too. Um, probably sleep you know, two teenagers or two small children, two children on this one. Um, and this goes way back as well. Um, so it's really a nice setup for racing. Um, my battery's under there along with my cooler. I say, there is plenty of storage space. In fact, Ian stated the F25C had for its size, more load carrying capability than any of his other designs. I mean, it's light, so you have a 1,700 pound boat. Um, of course, you can carry a little more when it's, you know, similar to other designs of his. I think that's it. I know there's a lot I missed. Uh, there's a lot you don't really care to know about. Uh, keep it as short as possible. So anyways, thanks all for all the help, um, the design help, and have a good day. Standing headroom. There you go. It's kind of custom to me. So everything clears. That's it.